I'm Benjamin from SAP. Um, I'll have a brief talk on the, the inner source linter we built uh, at SAP, which is sort of a technical answer to, to a few problems we found um, uh, in-house during service we did uh, with developers. Um, brief look at the agenda. Can we share my, uh, my windows here? Um, so yeah, we'll talk about why we thought we would need a linter. Uh, what do we actually check with this linter? Um, we'll have a brief overview on the technical setup, nothing in depth, but really just a, just a brief overview. Um, and we'll have a quick demo on how the linter actually works, how it looks for all people in here. Um, and then we'll talk about the current state and the future plans um, for for the Nassau's linter. Um, so during the, the service we did with uh, developers, we saw that at least from the technical product uh, project setup side, um, we have two things to cope with. Um, one of them is um, how people can discover inner source projects in our company. Um, and it turns out we, we have a solution for this. So we um, built the, the inner source project portal a while back. Uh, it's essentially just a portal that is being built up from our in-house GitHub uh, enterprise servers. Um, it picks up all repositories that have an inner source topic uh, on them. So it's for those who do not know GitHub very well. It's like a tag at, at a repository. And we essentially just list all repositories with that tag in this portal, um, add some metadata to it, calculate sort of um, how active the product uh, the project is and sorted uh, by that activity, um, and then display it in this portal. Uh, the portal itself is. In the meantime, an, an inner source pattern available on the inner source pattern page um, and is also available as an open source project um, in SAP's GitHub organization. Um, the second issue we saw uh, during the service is actually that um, discovering is one thing, but understanding um, a project is another thing. Um, the idea we had to deal with this is standardization. Just like for these wines in the background, we have standard terms to talk about them. So we have red wine, white wine, and we have dry wine and semi-dry. And I'm not a perfect uh, someone in, I'm not an expert in wine, but there's like very basic things to talk about wine on a basic level. And that should be the same for inner source projects. So we came up with what we call a guide for project maintainers. And the guide, uh, guide for project maintainer is, is really just a very small hands-on um, documentation of how a proper repository could be set up. So we talk about basic repository configuration, like you should have a clear name, you should have a repository, repository that's visible inside of SAP. Um, people or possible contributors should be able to create pull requests and project documentation, ways to communicate with the people in the project, um, how the project does track um, their issues, so access to their backlog, essentially, um, and even how to contribute to the project, so how the, the whole setup is, how does the, the workflow of contribution work, where can you find additional information, whom can you contact, and so on. Um, this is what this guide describes. Um, and where you should put it in your project. Um, and out of that, the idea arose that we could build a linter that actually checks if that information or that configuration is enabled in an inner source repository. Oops, sorry. So what do we actually check? Um, we well, with, with the idea of standardization and orientation for uh, the projects, um, we actually rely a lot on the, the GitHub community health files. So those who do not know, um, GitHub has sort of a few standard files, the ones listed here, like README, contributing support and governance markdown files, um, and also the code owners files that sort of are there to describe your community and how your community works around your project. So the readme is quite obvious. It's like your, your project entry main page. Um, the contributing is the 
document that describes how your interaction works in the project, how people can can contribute, what they have to do, what you expect them to do, like being available after a comp contribution and so on. Um, uh, the support describes how people can contact you in case they need support. The governance obviously described, describes how, how, the, the, how the project is governed. And the code owners file is sort of GitHub configuration file that um, automatically adds reviewers to, um, to certain pull requests. Um, beyond that, we check for repository configuration, like the visibility if a branch is protected, so not anybody can push um, random stuff to your main branches. Um, I talked about the inner source topic being there as a marker for projects that are part of our inner source project portal. So we check if uh, that topic is added to the repositories. And then there's obviously some, some more um, SAP-specific rules that just make sense in our setup. Um, so it's it's rather not worth to talk about them today. Um, not really secrets, but, but just uh, rather um, specific things. Um, <clears throat> the, the technical setup is quite easy. So GitHub enables integration by so-called GitHub applications. Um, with a GitHub application, you enable uh, authorization and access to the GitHub APIs. So there's a REST API and a GraphQL API. They are obviously different in, in terms of uh, technique, but also different in terms of what you can do with them. Um, so the, the GraphQL is actually a bit more enhanced than the REST API in the meantime. Um, and by that, any inner source project in SAP can install the Linter application into their well, they, they actually install a GitHub application into their GitHub org and then can say that they either want to enable access to all repositories or just a subset um, of repositories in your organization. Um, the Linter system will recognize that installation and schedule uh, a Linter run um, for each repository once uh, each 24, hour, 24 hours um, and information on failed rules or warnings or whatever will be presented in what we call the you know, the, the linter dashboard um, and the, the dashboard is quite simple again it's just a pinned github issue in that particular repository which has been constantly updated with uh, new findings or new failures or whatever or if something was improved with with an okay rule um, in addition to that um, we have what we call a basic lint. So we take all inner source repositories from the project portal that do not yet have the linter installed and run well, a rather basic linter on them because we cannot run all the, the rules because the, the X permission is different from the actual installation. Um, but it's it's really there to motivate people. So we say, hey, we, we did run the linter. We have checked these like three rules um, with that outcome, but we invite you um, to install the linter to get more uh, detailed information on the state of your project and to to gain more um, yeah functionality from the lint. So far, we have done that once as a manual action, um, but we plan to to run this parallel in the future to catch new inner source repositories. All right, so far to the, the technical setup. Let's look at the, the actual linter. Um, so I prepared something for you. Um, I, I have our inner source summit uh, 2024 repository in here, and it's really just an empty repository with a readme. So uh, that's nothing uh, really special. Um, we do not have all these files I just talked about. So the, the linter will actually come out with a lot of failures. Um, to install that, um, I can get to the uh, GitHub application page, which is this one here. Um, if you didn't install the linter before, that one would be the button would be green and say installed. I did install that to many organizations already, um, so I kind of picked the the Nasus linter demo, and I'll do that for only selected repositories and the summit one. All right, now the, the linter in the background will receive that information via 
a webhook that is configured in GitHub, run the linter, and will now already respond with an issue. It's the Inasos linter dashboard. It's also pinned up here to be just very visible to, to the project folks. And if we look into the dashboard, um, we essentially see all information on the latest linter run. So we have a timestamp. We see checks in failed state. There should also be at least one check, which is successful, which is the readme. Oh, yeah, it's, it's two. The, the repository is visible, right? So at least that. Um, and we also have warnings, but the, the inner source JSON rule is, is a rather SAP in, uh, internal one. Um, so it, for example, tells us, hey, you do not have a contributing file. Uh, we recommend you to have that in your project so that people can understand how they can interact with your project and essentially contribute something to you. Um, now it's it's rather hard to start working on writing a completely new contributory markdown files. And what we did a long time ago is to set up a template repository um, for inner source projects in SAP. And the linter now offers a way to use that template repository. So we actually offer options down here that you can drop down. And then you can say, fix the rule. Now, actually, the, the linter does not fix the rule. But what it does, it provides you with um, a pull request that contains the contributing file um, from, the, from the template repository. Now you can pick that. Um, change the pull request, add your actual information and adopt it, uh, adopt it according to your uh, project. And then you have a contributing file in your repository, plus it adheres to what we provide as a template. So again, um, you'll end up with a very standardized uh, project setup here. Another gimmick that uh, the Linter offers is that we will there might be some rules that may not apply to some projects. So let's pick, for example, oh no, that one won't work because it's a it's a config. Oh, it should work. Um, you can actually ignore um, rules for future linter runs. And if you tick that one, you'll actually get um, a pull request as well because that one is configured via a file in your repository, which is this inner source JSON file. As I said, that one is rather SAP specific. It also serves some some other purposes, but it also serves to to have the linter configuration in there. And that one will now contain um, the ignore field with the the dismiss the pull request approvals rule. Um, and if you now would merge that pull request, the file will be added to your repository, and with the next linter runs, that will will be ignored and not raise a failure anymore. All right, so far for the demo, um, let's look at the current state and our future plans. I'll have to move that uh, that Zoom window with the cameras around a bit because it's always in my way. Um, so the, the Linter is currently installed in roughly 300 repositories. Um, the majority of the findings of the Linter is actually not being addressed by the maintainers. So we have analytics in place. We do measure how many linter runs we have, how many installations we have, and the, how the, the outcomes of the rules are. Um, and we can see that many of the findings in repositories um, stay at a very constant level. That does not mean that SAP's inner source projects are in a bad situation after all. Um, but the, the point is that people in SAP are not very used to be using GitHub issues because we rather use Jira for project maintenance or tracking. Um, so that's one of the things we want to look into. Um, we want to remind people by, for example, mention them in an issue or a comment um, yeah, of, of taking care of the findings and then use our analytics again to see if that has any outcomes. In the future, we'll also add more rules um, and probably if refine existing rules, um, for example, checking for file contents. So at the moment, we only check for file, 
presence, uh, but there, there might also be some things where we also want to check for the content of the files. Um, and as I said before, we did run the, the basic lint once uh, for now, and that should become a periodical task so we can catch new inner source repositories in SAP. All right, so far for the moment, thank you for your patience and your time. Um, and yeah, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And if not, I'll wish you yeah, some a nice evening and uh, a good rest of the conference.